the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. The Good Samaritan. It's a story that we're all very familiar with. Who is my neighbor? And with all the trouble in the world, especially the bombings in Beirut and Paris in the last few days, we have to ask, in this world, where we're, the world is very small, who is my neighbor? And I think we have to, at this point, decide whether we really believe that our neighbor is worthy of protecting and binding up or not. There's a couple of other passages from, that Christ said that I'd like to throw in the, the mix here today. First is from later in Luke, Luke 22. And, the said, and he said to them, When I sent you without money, bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? So they said nothing. He said to them, But now he who has money bag, let him take it. And likewise a knapsack. He who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And from the Gospel of John, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And so when we see the innocents killed wantonly, we have to do something. Our leaders have to do something. We elect them so that they will exert right power in the right way. And we don't elect them to stick their head in the sand. And there are those who say that these people who carry out these things, oh, they're not really Muslims. But think about this. If someone of these people were to say, all you Protestants out there, all you goes to these evangelical churches, all you Lutherans, all you Presbyterians, you're not really Christian because you're not Orthodox or Roman Catholic. He would be lynched, at least in the media, if not literally. And yet here we can say, oh, they're not really Muslims. That's not really the way they are. Bullcorn. Bullcorn. I, one of my favorite sayings that I think I invented is our God is the God of reality. And you can't stick your head in the sand and say, these aren't really Muslims. These are really Muslims. These people believe they're following that book. Which is why Christians aren't really people of the book. We're the people of God, not the book. Anybody can twist a book. You can't twist God. You can't twist God. And so we're called upon to do what is in our power to hunt these people out, to stop the next one before it happens. And in this country, all doing that without giving up our own individual liberties. And I've heard, and I didn't look this up because that's too typical, that sometimes you just want to believe what you hear, is that they're now saying, oh, these Paris attacks is a new reason to try to limit guns. Well, think of what had happened if these guys pull up to those restaurants and not only they jump out of their cars with their guns, but someone starts shooting back at them. Maybe they would have been a different thing. If there's a hundred and something people, I'm, well, a hundred got killed. I'm not sure how many people in this nightclub. If a third of them had their own gun and started shooting back, what would have happened? It's silly. Oh, we got bad people, so let's take away our protection. I'm sorry, but I don't think the Lord of reality really sees it that way. Now is the time to take up your sword. Now is the time. Get your knapsack. Be prepared. Thank God in Fredericksburg we're probably not going to have this problem anytime soon. But if you travel, you've got to be extra careful these days. In many places in this country, there's already inroads being made. And it's eternal vigilance. If the man knew the hour the thief would come, he would have set his guard. Well, I'm telling you, the hour is now here for our country, for all the Western world, and for each of us. Now is the time to take up your sword, to lay down your life, to protect the innocents. That's why we have soldiers. That's why we have police. Someone's got to protect us because this is a rotten world and the demons, the devil, is the prince of this world. And he stirs up all kinds of mischief 
and hate. And we have to protect ourselves and our loved ones from that. And we still do that while loving our neighbor. So tell me Christianity is not a paradox. How do you do that? Protect our loved ones and yet still love our neighbor. It's because we have to learn how to read hearts. And I know that's impossible for most of us and very difficult for the rest. But that's our our task. That's the task that Christ puts before us. Love your neighbor as yourself, but don't close your eyes to what he's doing. He never said that. Christ never said, close your eyes to what he's doing. So keep that in mind as you hear the news the next several days about what's happening, the things that come out of capitals, and all the things that trouble us in this world. God doesn't say, close your eyes, but he does say, love your neighbor. So the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us.